Hello. Today, I would like to share with you some ideas on how not to miss trichotillomania in a patient with alopecia. Let's go. What is trichotillomania from the point of view of a dermatologist or maybe more precisely from the point of view of trichoscopy? Well, this is hair loss, which is resulting from hair pulling, from using mechanical force to pull the hairs. What happens when we pull our hair? Well, at one point the hair will break, and when it breaks, it will coil at both ends. And these coiled ends, they tend to form different structures, and in trichoscopy, we will look at the distal ends of these parts of hairs which are left after the hair fracture. So what do we expect to see in a patient with trichotillomania in trichoscopy? Yes, we expect to see multiple broken hairs and usually they are in a chaotic arrangement, just as you see in this image. And also in this patient, you'll see many broken hairs and they are arranged quite chaotically. And also here, many broken hairs and no real order. There's a chaotic arrangement of these hairs which are left. So the most common feature of trichotillomania in trichoscopy is the presence of multiple broken hairs in a chaotic arrangement. However, the presence of multiple broken hairs is not a very specific feature because we may see broken hairs also in other diseases such as alopecia reata and tinea capitis and many others. So we will be looking for the very specific features for trichotillomania. And today, I would like to introduce the seven key trichoscopy features of trichotillomania. The first and probably the most specific feature of trichotillomania and trichoscopy is the presence of hook hairs. These are hairs which have a distal end which is shaped like a hook. And if we see a field of view with multiple hook hairs, we can be almost sure that this is trichotillomania because the hook hairs have a 100% positive predictive score for trichotillomania. A second and also a very characteristic feature of trichotillomania and trichoscopy is the presence of the so-called coiled hairs. These are hairs which tend to be coiled at the distal end. And also a characteristic feature is that they tend to be very irregular in shape. And if you're a hair expert, please think how you would define the difference between the coiled hairs and the so-called circle hairs or pigtail hairs, which we may sometimes find in alopecia reata. Yes, exactly, you are right. The circle hairs, they are very regular in shape, and what is most characteristic, they will have a very sharp distal end, unlike the coiled hairs of trichotillomania, which usually are very irregular in shape and have an irregular distal end. Number three. Number three is the V-sign. The V-sign develops when a person is pulling two hairs or more within one follicular unit. And when the hair breaks, they will usually break at the same length because they are being pulled with the same strength at the same angle. And what will be left will be two hairs which form a shape like letter V. And this is the V-sign also a typical feature of trichotillomania and trichoscopy. Number four are the flame hairs. The flame hairs sometimes cause confusion, so I have placed here three different images of flame hairs in patients with trichotillomania. What is characteristic is that these are hair residues which are semi-transparent, they are wavy in structure, and they tend to be thinning towards the distal end. Number five is the hair powder. The hair powder is even less of a hair residue compared to a flame hair. This is the presence of dispersed particles of a hair residue. Number six, trichoptalosis or split hair. 
When we think about split ends, what comes to mind is usually a person with long hair and the tendency to split ends of hair shafts over time. However, in trichoscopy, we usually see very short hairs. They are too young to split by physiology. And if we see split hairs, which are very short, this should make us suspicious about the possibility of trichotillomania. By definition, split hair or trichoploidosis is a tendency to develop longitudinal splitting of the distal end of the hair shaft. Number seven, the tulip hair. The tulip hair develops, I believe, when a hair is broken diagonally. This gives the impression that it is hyperpigmented at the distal end, and this hyperpigmentation may have the shape of a tulip petal, and this is why they are called the tulip hairs. The most common feature of trichotillomania and trichoscopy is the presence of transverse fractures and of black dots. But despite the fact that they are common, they are not specific, so they have less diagnostic value. Before I tell you something new about trichoscopy of trichotillomania, just a summary of the top seven trichoscopy features, the hook hairs, the cold hairs, the V-sign, the flame hairs, the hair powder, the split hair, and the tulip hair. And the three top features are most specific for trichotillomania. A dermatologist's dream about an image of trichoscopy in a patient with trichotillomania may look like this. It has multiple broken hairs in a chaotic arrangement. It has some black dots. There are also specific features like the hook hairs, a V sign, and also some hair powder. But in real life, this usually looks a little bit different. Usually, they are not so many different trichoscopy features of trichotillomania in one field of view, and we will need to look for the specific features. And occasionally, very rarely, the trichoscopy images may look like this with only very discrete features of trichotillomania. And with this image, I would like to draw your attention to trichotillomania incognita, which was described just a few weeks ago. And this is a case of a person who has almost normal looking hair, but complains of some tendency of a hair which stopped growing. And in trichoscopy, you will see just very discrete features of trichotillomania. Here is one of my patients with trichotillomania incognita, and I must say that I'm a little bit jealous that I was not the first one to think about this very intelligent name for this condition. And this is a 19-year-old patient who admits to playing with her hair, and especially when she's watching TV or reading a book. And in trichoscopy, the features of trichotillomania are really very discreet. So with trichoscopy, it is possible to identify different forms of trichotillomania from very severe to very, very discreet. With trichoscopy, we identify hair loss which results from pulling or from mechanical force. We do not identify with trichoscopy the state of mind of the person or the psychological stress. I must say that I like the division of trichotillomania into the automatic type and the focus type. The automatic type being at least partly outside of the awareness of the patient. It may be associated with the so-called playing with hair. And usually these are the patients which we see in our office, the patients who will visit the dermatologist. On the other part of the spectrum is the focus type of trichotillomania. It is with full awareness of the patient, sometimes associated with stress or with a kind of pleasure or feeling of relief. And some of these patients will have a psychiatric comorbidity. And these are the patients who will usually visit the office of a psychiatrist. In conclusion, multiple broken hairs, especially in a chaotic arrangement, are a very common feature of trichotillomania and trichoscopy. The one most characteristic feature with the highest positive predictive value is the presence of the hook hairs. And if there are more than one in a field of view, you can be almost sure about the diagnosis. If you would like to hear more about trichoscopy, please consider visiting my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.